arsenic, dimethylmercury, ricin. In today's video, we're diving into the dark and dangerous world of deadly poisons. We'll uncover the most lethal substances known to man, exploring their origins, how they work, and the terrifying effects they have on the human body. Let's get started. Arsenic. Arsenic is a seriously deadly poison. It's been around for ages and has a pretty long history of being used. It doesn't have any color, smell, or taste, which makes it really hard to detect. When taken in high dosage, arsenic causes severe abdominal cramps, vomiting, and ultimately death. Some famous people like Napoleon and George III are thought to have died from arsenic poisoning. Although arsenic is a toxic element, it's still widely used. For example, it's a semiconductor doping agent that adds blue color to pyrotechnics. It's also added to lead shot to improve its spherical shape. Arsenic compounds can be found in some poisons like insecticides, which are used to protect wood from termites, fungus, and mold. Arsenic is also used to make linoleum, glass that transmits infrared light, and even as a chemical hair remover. It's even added to some alloys to improve their properties. To my surprise, arsenic has some therapeutic uses too. It's an essential trace mineral that's good for chickens, goats, and rodents, and maybe humans too. You can add it to their food to help them gain weight. Arsenic has even been used to treat syphilis and cancer, and it's been used as a skin bleaching agent too. Some bacteria even use arsenic instead of oxygen for photosynthesis to get energy. Hemlock. The poison in question could be from the hemlock plant, Conium maculatum, or from the water hemlock family of plants, Secuta and Oenanthe species. Historically, hemlock has been used for execution, like for Socrates, for example. When you're poisoned, it starts with paralysis, where your mind is still working, but your body can barely move. It takes a while to take effect, and eventually, it kills you. The biggest danger with poison hemlock is that you could accidentally eat it. It only takes a small amount to be deadly, so if you have pets or young kids, it's important to know what to look out for and get rid of it if you can. The toxins from the plant can also get into your body through your skin and lungs, so wear gloves and a face mask when you're around it. Symptoms of hemlock poisoning include dilation of the pupils, weakening or slowing pulse, blue coloration around the mouth, and eventually paralysis of the central nervous system and muscles leading to death. Quick treatment can reverse the effects, so act quickly. Dimethylmercury Dimethylmercury is a really dangerous stuff. It's so dangerous because it's a slow poison, and you don't know you're infected until it's too late. There's no cure for it once you're affected. Just a little bit of it, like 0.1 milligrams, can kill you. In 1996, this chemistry professor at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, she was wearing gloves when she handled some dimethylmercury. She thought she was safe, but the gloves didn't protect her. It went through the gloves and took four months for the effects to show. Then, 10 months later, she died. Dimethylmercury is metabolized after several days to methylmercury. Methylmercury crosses the blood-brain barrier easily, probably owing to formation of a complex with cysteine. Methylmercury poisoning is also known as Minamata disease. Signs and symptoms include ataxia, numbness in the hands and feet, general muscle weakness, loss of peripheral vision, and damage to hearing and speech. In extreme cases, insanity, paralysis, coma, and death follow within weeks of the onset of symptoms. Tetrodotoxin Tetrodotoxin is a rare poison that's usually found in marine creatures like pufferfish and octopuses. You can find it in places like Taiwan, Japan, and Southeast Asia. The cool thing about tetrodotoxin is that it doesn't kick in right away. It can take hours for you to feel the effects. That's why it's so dangerous. You might not even know you've been poisoned until it's too late. Tetrodotoxin mainly affects the nervous system, causing things like numbness and tingling, particularly around the mouth and extremities. You might also get paralysis, starting in the face and then spreading to other parts of your body. Muscle weakness can happen, as well as trouble speaking and swallowing. Tetrodotoxin can be found in the following. Gastropod mollusk, the eggs of horseshoe crabs, newts of the genus Tericha, the skin of atelopid frogs, the skin and viscera of porcupine fish, globefish, balloonfish, and some species of salamanders. Atropa belladonna. Atropa belladonna, or deadly nightshade, is a plant that has a poison. In ancient times, Venetian women used it as a kind of cosmetic to enhance their beauty, but then people discovered that it could also be used as a toxic substance to kill people. The poison in the plant is so strong that even one leaf could take someone's life. 
and the pretty looking berries on the plant are just as poisonous. The berries have a pleasantly sweet taste and accidental poisoning after eating them is not rare, especially in children. Poisoning due to recreational intake for its hallucinatory effects is most common in teenagers. Symptoms include meaningless speech, lack of coordination, tremors and shakings, confusion and hallucinations, anxiety, agitation and aggressiveness, increased heart rate, enlarged pupils and blurred vision, numbness, coma and even death. Facts about Belladonna the oral overdose level for belladonna is only 600 milligrams. Only one part to 130,000 parts water is sufficient to dilate the pupils. The wives of the Roman emperors Augustus and Claudius poisoned them with atropine, a tropane alkaloid that is contained in belladonna. Some people have been poisoned by eating honey that contains significant amounts of atropine, cyanide. Cyanide is a really dangerous toxin, but it's also really effective. If you take it, you're guaranteed to die. It works by stopping your body from using oxygen, which is essential for life. You can find cyanide in different things like almonds, apple seeds, and apricot kernels. It's also in tobacco smoke and some insecticides and pesticides. You can even find it in a gaseous form called hydrogen cyanide. The Nazis used this to kill people in gas chambers during World War II. Because cyanide is a common toxin in our environment, our bodies can handle a small amount. We can eat apple seeds or breathe in cigarette smoke and not die. But if cyanide is used as poison or chemical weapon, it's dangerous. A big dose of inhaled cyanide kills too quickly for treatment to work. The first thing to do for inhaled cyanide is get the person to fresh air. If someone ingests cyanide or has a smaller dose inhaled, doctors can give them antidotes to detoxify the cyanide. These antidotes bind to cyanide and make it harmless. For example, Vitamin B12 binds to cyanide to make cyanocobalamin, which gets flushed out of your body in your urine. I don't know what you need this info for, but I sure hope none of my followers ever get poisoned or anything. Aconitine. This is another poison that can be found in plants. Aconitum plants are really toxic and can hurt your heart and nerves. You can get poisoned even if you just touch the leaves without gloves, because it can easily get into your skin. It's mentioned in history books and Greek mythology like how Emperor Claudius was poisoned by Agrippina with mushrooms that had aconitine in them. It looks like Claudius got poisoned twice. That's rough. In Greek mythology, Athena used it to turn Arachne into a spider, and Medea tried to kill Theseus with aconitine. Medea's mother, Hecate, is said to have used it on her father. Modern cases of aconite poisoning warn us of the toxicity of the plant as well. The first documented homicide case involving aconitine poisoning happened in 1881 when George Henry Lamson was convicted of murdering his brother-in-law. Most cases of aconitine poisoning are the result of someone trying to use monkshood plants for their therapeutic effects. Other common causes of monkshood poisoning include confusing the plant for something edible or children eating the plant. Aconitine poisoning can cause severe illness and death. The poisoning symptoms can start minutes to hours after contact with the substance and may include abdominal pain, chest pain, diarrhea, dizziness, heart rhythm changes, nausea, numbness. Reason: This really toxic plant poison was used to kill Georgi Markov, a Bulgarian dissident who was exiled in London in a famous incident. On September 7, 1978, Markov was waiting for a bus near Waterloo Bridge when he felt a bump on his right thigh. He looked around and saw a guy bending down to pick up an umbrella, but he didn't think anything of it. Soon after, Markov started feeling sick with a high fever and died three days later. The autopsy found a tiny ball made of platinum iridium in his thigh. The sphere was probably drilled to get a little bit of ricin, and it might have been shot out of a gun hidden in an umbrella. Ricin comes from the seeds of the castor bean plant, Ricinus communis. They grow to extract oil, and the ricin stays in the solid part. It's a protein that stops cells from making new proteins, so they die. It takes only 1 to 20 milligrams to kill you if you swallow it, but much less if you breathe it in or get it injected, like Markov did. Symptoms of ricin poisoning depend on how you come into contact with it. If you breathe it in, you might get a fever, tight chest, cough, and trouble breathing. It can also cause fluid to build up in your lungs, which is called pulmonary edema. If you eat ricin, you might have vomiting and diarrhea, as well as bleeding in your gut and damage to your organs. The poison could kill you in three days, even in small amounts. So guys, don't eat ricin.
Thanks for watching. Click that like and subscribe button. It will help our channel to grow. Let me know in the comments whatever you want and what topic you want me to cover. See you in the next one. Bye.